Yesterday we did solving by graphing, so I want you to keep the image in your mind that there are two lines crossing and there's an intersection point somewhere. But we aren't graphing anymore because graphing is not always very practical. So we're going to do a couple of examples, two or three examples. How are, if this seems like it's too difficult at some point, or if it seems tricky, because there's going to be some tricky bits to it. But that's one of the reasons why I'm splitting it up into several days. System where I say y equals 2x minus 7, and y equals 13. Super simple system where one of the equations is actually looks like an answer to something. But it is a system of equations, and if we graphed it, those two somewhere, and then where they, land, where they cross is their answer. But there's ways to finding that without actually drawing it out. So we're going to be using substitution. This says y equals this, but then y also equals I is supposed to be equaling these two things, and these two things look, look different. It must make sense logically that those two things equal each other. Y equals this, but Y equals also that. So that means those two things also are equal to each other. I'm drawing the boxes just because I think it makes, makes more sense in my brain to think of it that way. So I go 2x minus 7 equals 13. That's how I set up the equation. Once you have this set up, you just solve the equation like we know how to solve. So this is the new part where you set the two things equal to each other. Then from here, I'm going to add that 7 to both sides. The 7s are going to cancel. We get 2x equals 20. Divide both sides by 2. And we have half of our answer, although it feels like we have all of our answer. We don't really. We just have, we found the x. Your gra if we graphed this, there'd be an intersection point right here where they cross. That point has an x value and a y value. <coughs> I know that the x one is 10, and because this is example number one, it's easy to find the y. Hell, coming next, it won't be so easy to find the y. But obviously, the y must be 13, because they straight up told us y was 13 before we started. So this is your final answer. You write it as an ordered pair, x, y, ordered pair. x is 10, y is 13. Example two. y equals negative 7x minus 23. I'm not, we're kind of heavy on the negatives because I know we need to review that. y equals x plus 9. Equals this thing. But y also equals that thing. That means those two things must be equal to each other. Whatever is in equals what's in the second box because the problem says y equals both of those things. So they have to be equal to each other. I don't know what the x is that's going to make that happen, but that's what we're about to figure out. Minus 7x minus 23 equals x plus 9. All I did was rewrite it without the, it kind of looks like it's a normal multi-step equation. There is more than one way to do this, so there is no right way to do this, but there are better ways to do this that avoid mistakes. The way I do it, because I get screwed up too sometimes, I make dumb mistakes a lot, is I like all my number parts to be over here and it's to be over here. So. What I'm going to do is when I look at this, I'm probably going to subtract this x from both sides first. That means I, I get move this x away from there and get it over there. 
And when I do that, this becomes negative 8x minus 23. And this side cancels, and I get a 9. What's the next move? What do you want to do next? Yep. Go here, and then my numbers are all on one side, and my x's are all on the other side. The negative 8x comes down. The 23 cancels. I get negative 8x equals 9 plus 23 is 32. Divide both sides by negative 8. x equals negative 4. That's half of our answer. Now to find the y. You have to go back up to the beginning. You have two equations here, but this x has got to go back into one of them. It doesn't matter which one you use. I like the x plus 9 equation because it's going to be simpler and less opportunity. I won't make as many mistakes if I use a simple equation. I could make some sign mistakes if I'm making sign mistakes. So my next move here is to find the y. And I'm going to use this equation that says y equals x plus 9. But I know what the x is now. The x was negative 4. That's going to go right here. So in first semester... You'd be done when we solve for x. In second, we solve a system, which means there's a point somewhere. We're trying to find the y value of the point. So it's going to be y equals negative 4 plus 9 is 5. You write your answer as an ordered pair. The x comes first. The y comes second. And you are done at that point. If we graphed this, these two lines, negative 4, 5. But if you tried to graph this one, you would be starting at negative 23, and your slope is negative 7, so you'd be way off the graph and having to go even further south to start graphing it. Solving by graphing wouldn't be a good option for solving this system, just because those numbers are icky. 4x plus 7y equals 20, and y equals x plus 5. Okay, let me help you get started with this one, because this first equation is not solved for y. Nice catch. I'm substituting this in right here. So I'm rewriting the first equation, negative 4x plus 7 times something. equals 20. Yeah. Yeah. X plus 5 goes right there. You want me to keep working this one like an example? Okay, I can do that. But all I'm doing, I'm, su I'm still substituting, so instead of saying two things equal to each other, I'm substituting that in right there. Now, if I write this without the box, it's just a big equation. Negative 4x plus 7 times x plus 5 in parentheses equals... I don't know what to do now, but you might have forgotten. Does anyone remember what to do next? Yeah. Yep. Distributive property. Negative 4x plus 7. 7 times 5 is 35. That equals... Now from here, I would be putting those two together. What do you get when you put a negative 4 with a 7? 3x plus. Yeah. We end up with 3x equals negative 15. Divide both sides by 3. x equals negative 5. Answer, can you guys figure out how to get the y? I go ahead and do it. If you're not sure how to get the y, just wait a second. Because i got to roll back up to the top. Use either equation that you want, but I'm hella loving that y equals x plus 5 one. So I'm going to take my x and deposit it inside of that equation where it says y equals x plus 5. 
So y equals plus 5, and we already know what the something is. We just solved for it. It's negative 5. So y equals 0. So from our work, I know that x equals negative 5 and y equals 0. And the teacher said that was the answer, so I'm good. And that's all the work. If you get lost in here, for anybody I need you to know, you get lost in the middle of a problem, push through and copy my work so that when I do the notebook checks, you're still going to get the points for doing the notes. I, I know when you get lost, sometimes it's you want to put your pencil down and just watch it and think, which is one of the reasons, too, why I'm recording this right now, so I can start putting all these up on the YouTube channel. So when you guys need to go, I need to take another look at that, and you can pause it and do all that, you can. Okie doke. Can we do a try it now for real? Okay. All right, I got two more then, two try it's to do. Again, all I'm asking, if you get it, fantastic. You're not supposed to master it right now, but I do need you guys to wrestle around this a little bit. It's un if it's uncomfortable and you get frustrated, I understand. But it'll be easier next time if you put the work in right now. Here is your try it. Y equals 5x minus 11. And the second equation is 3x minus 7y equals 1. Your answer is supposed to be 2, negative 1. So if you're not getting x equals 2, and initially go back and look for some sign mistakes. So if you guys are not sure how to start, I'm telling you that y equals this thing. And in the second equation, y appears right here. So that means you're going to shove that sucker there. So the next line, if you're stuck, your next line is negative 3x minus 7 times 5x minus 11 equals 1. There. So, again, please don't be discouraged. There's a lot of steps in here. I'm expecting things to go wrong. This is a two and three day lesson, I'm telling you. This negative 7 gets multiplied times everything that's in the parentheses. It is minus 3x minus 35x. Because se negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. This negative 7 times the negative 11 is a positive 77. And then I, r I just copy the equals 1. So that's the second line. When you guys are asking me to see what you did wrong, it's just something's happening in that line right there. And so far, anything like horrible, just kind of dumb little mistakes that humans make. I'm a human. I make mistakes too. Literally, I should show you the notes from last period. It was crazy the stuff I was doing. Stuff I don't even usually do. Now we're going to put those two together. Negative 3x and a negative 35 is a negative 38x plus 71. So then I'm going to subtract the 77 from both sides. I get negative 38x minus 76. Except I didn't draw the equal sign, did I? There it is. There's a mistake. I fix it. Divide both sides by negative 38. If you're not sure about all this stuff, use the calculators. They are on your tables. They're going to be there for a while because these numbers get weird. X equals, I think that's 2. It's supposed to be 2. Now we've got to go back and find the Y. You pick which equation you want to use. You can use either one. You just use one of the two that you started with. Sometimes they're both going to be crappy. But usually there's going to be one that's less crappy than the other. So I'm thinking I'm going for that one right there to solve for my y. So y equals 5 times something minus 11. And the something we just figured out is 2. So it'll be a 2 here. 
So I'm getting y equals 10 minus 11. So y equals negative close to get. You don't understand. Let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube, bring it to me in class or put a comment down below and I'll answer. We're going to do one more try. Let's do minus 2x plus 4y equals 18. That's the first. The second equation is y equals 4x plus 15. There's a y in the first equation. The second equation tells you what the y is. We're going to replace that y with this expression that's there. So negative 2x, I'm just copying it, plus 4 times something equals 18. Well, instead of writing the y, I just left a blank there. This 4x plus 15 goes right there. Step. We do distributive property. So I'm just copying the minus 2x. 4 times 4x is 16x. 4 times positive 15 is positive 60. And that equals 18. Then from here, we have to combine these like terms that we put the x's together. A 60 equals 18 because negative 2 and 16 is 14. Then we're going to subtract 60 from both sides. We get 14x equals somebody, what's 18 minus 60? Negative 42? Okay. And then we divide both sides by 14. So this is one of those problems where once you learn how to start, you probably know how to finish. But it's the starting is the new. X equals negative 3. I got one more step because we have to figure out what the y is. Okay, we're going to put that inside there and we'll solve for y. So y equals 4 times negative 3. y equals negative 12 plus 15. y equals 3. So those are the two answers.